Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video in the eHoudini Academy Foundation module. In this video, we are going to install our new texturing utility nodes in order to texture our building so it looks a bit more like that, right? Our example file. So let's go over to Houdini and let's have a look. Right now, we have a couple of different areas that can receive textures, such as our tiles over here. They could make do with a texture. We also want to assign it to our floors over here, as well as the railings for the top of our building. And finally, um, at the moment, we also have our pillars, which could do with a texture as well. Now, the way I'm gonna go about doing this is by replacing my extrude nodes throughout my network that I've placed here, but also in several other parts, with our new extrude and texture utility node that we created over the last couple of videos. And then in a couple of cases, I'm also going to use the simple Unreal Texture where I don't actually need to extrude something, I just need to apply a texture. Now, these nodes themselves have the ability to assign a texture from my dropdown over here. So these are already pre-configured and should allow us to quickly set up our textures. Next to this, we also need to make sure that the textures themselves can work with scaling. So if we, for example, change the size of our building's floor, right? If we make each floor bigger, then I also want to make sure that the textures themselves also scale accordingly because we don't want them to stretch. We want to make sure that if the wall gets too tall, the texture um, doubles up or triples up uh, along the height of the wall. So we have a couple of things to do. Um, and then once we complete this, we can start working on the remaining pieces of our building, such as the detailed elevator shafts, the staircases, and the balconies. And then finally, we'll wrap up the course with the um, compiling system, which will speed up our tool in general. But for now, let's go ahead and install these nodes. So the first thing I would like to do is go up here to my railing and let's go and install our texture node here first. So for this railing, what I want to do is take my original inset railing shape, which is a very simple polygon shape over here, which is horizontal and that we extrude up. And I want to replace this extrude node with our new um, extrude and texture node. So let's grab one of those. And let's plug it in behind our inset railing shape like that. Um, now I am going to hide temporarily my um, flags here so they don't get in the way. Or at least make them a lot smaller, right? And let's move this over. We can keep this one on the side if you want. Right now this node is not going to be used anymore. So I'm just going to color it dark red. Uh, at least it reminds me that I'm going to delete it later. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to set it up so it has the same height offset as this one. So over here, let's copy our railing height, plug it in over here under depth. And then as for the rest, um, it looks like this one only has a front and a side. So over here, we can turn off our bottom section. And this will make sure that it does not actually output a bottom over there. So that's fine. And then let's set up the texture for this wall. So as for the paths uh, for the material and the texture, uh, we need to set these up so they get configured from the top of our network. And we already have these paths, right? So we can go up here, go to um, parameters, go to setup. And then from here, I simply want to grab my materials folder, drag that over in here. And then we don't actually have our prefix texture folder over here just yet. So let's also set this one up so we have it available from the type properties for all the other parts of our network. So let's open up our type properties. So let's grab from over here my prefix texture folder, drag it in over above our Unreal Material path. And then I'm just gonna remove this part from the name 
we want to make sure that the default value is dollar sign job slash tax slash. And if you got that set, then we can just apply that. So with this, now these should be set up. We now have um, two expressions in here. Um, since we dragged one of these over, you can see again, it turned this one into an expression field. If you want this to be a um, back ticked expression, just copy that, delete it. And then we can paste it back in uh, either like this or by dragging it in from the parameters panel. And if you middle mouse click on that, then you can see the result. Either way will work. Um, personally, I actually prefer to use backticks, but sometimes I don't bother to change it. So it depends on what you prefer, but okay, let's continue. Then down here, let's configure this one. So now that we have our texture folders set up, we should be able to use our texture presets. Let's set up the um, side texture first. So let's open this one up. And then under here, I would like to use the concrete panel four. And this one is uh, a bit stretched. So we do need to change some of its settings in order to make it line up properly. First, let's take the scale and let's change that to 0 0.33 each. And this will stretch the texture along a bit. Um, it will also make it fit better between the top and bottom. And because the sweep by default uses the height of this object, if we change the height, it will stretch along, right? So we don't have to worry about its UV layout. This should work. Um, and then next, let's also have a look at the top. Since we've disabled the bottom, we don't have to deal with that one. So as for the top, I'm gonna set this one to a concrete material. So for this, let's use the polished concrete that should be over here. And this particular material is a nice smooth concrete. It should look something like this over here. So that will do nicely for the top uh, where maybe the player would put their hands, right? So you can imagine this is a softer type of material. As for its size, I'm going to set this one to a scale of 5 and 5 using an orthogonal projection. So I get a world space projection. So let's double check this one before we continue. Down here under our settings, we can see what type of materials are being output. And at the moment, I can notice that we don't actually have our Unreal material set. So we do need to make sure that's set up because this top one here will only deal with the material we see in Houdini. We need this one here for the Unreal Material. And for that, I'm going to assign Material Instances. And over here, we need to actually repeat what this one says. So let's set this one up to use the Polished Concrete Unreal Material. And then for the sides, we need to do the same thing here for the Concrete Panels for Base Color. So we need to make sure these are both set. Otherwise, it won't work in Unreal. Now you can see we do have our textures applied for Unreal, our materials. So now if we go to the end of our network, we should now have a material assigned to this element. Now we still have our original vertex color as well, and we need to set up a system later to remove that one, depending on what we want to do with it if we want to see it as a texture, or if we want to see it as a color, or perhaps just a um, standard uh, Houdini uh, grid texture. And I want to be able to create that one as well. But we'll deal with that one at the end. So next, let's go ahead and copy this node, and let's set it up for the floors as well. Because over here, next to it, we have our floors, right? So if we look at that one, under Create Floors, we have our Facet node, and below that, we have our Poly Extrude Floor Depth node. And this one, of course, deals with our floor depth. So I want to replace that one. I'm going to take this node again, pull it out, and I'm going to plug in this node over here. 
Now, um, you could go ahead and name these nodes actually, if you want to. So the old one that we just placed is called railings. And then this one should be floors. Now, as for the floors, I want to use the floor depth value from my original poly extrude. So let's grab that one. And let's plug it in up here. Now at the moment, this one's using the same texture as the other one was using. Um, I do want to change that. So let's go over here. First enable the bottom because I do need a bottom for my floors, of course. And as for its other settings under the um, extruding group, let's make sure that all of this is turned on. So that's fine. And I also want to make sure that we have our groups, which are enabled by default. If they're not enabled for you, then at least make sure that you are outputting a side group and a top group, because we'll need those later. And then for the textures of these floors, let's go to the texture tab. And in here, I want to change my side texture to be the um, concrete bars texture. So let's make sure we change that under both the preview texture and the unreal material as well. Both should be set to concrete bars like that. And then I want to change its scale. So this one is set to 0 0.21 like that. So it stretches nicely between the bottom and the top which is a number that I know works for this particular texture quite well. And then for the other scale, I'm going to set this one to 0 0.125. That will stretch it out a bit, but not too much. So it covers the uh, length of it and it won't repeat too much. Now down below for the um, bottom, I'm also going to set this one up. Now for the bottom, I'm going to use the um, concrete wall texture. This is going to be a um, base wall, very rough concrete. And we can use that for the bottom for the ceilings, for example. So let's make sure we repeat that for both fields. And then down here, I'm going to set this one to five and five for the scale. Make this big enough so it doesn't stand out too much. And then for the top material, I'm going to set the floors to use by default, the granite floor tiles material. So this one, if we set that up for both, is going to look quite nice for the interior of our building. It's basically um, this material over here. So it's a nice tiled texture that we can use for the interior. Um, and as for its scale, I'm going to set this one to four and four. So I want it to be slightly smaller. Okay, so this one should now be set up. Uh, we have our output groups and we have our textures. Okay, so far so good. Um, next, we need to deal with the trims of our building because the moment I extrude those out, watch what happens with the texture. It actually starts to stretch basically along the direction of the um, extrusion here. Now, in order to fix this, we could potentially go and look at the texture coordinates down here because these do reassign um, texture coordinates. Unfortunately, I've noticed that this is a little bit lacking and it doesn't work well with these types of extrusions. So in order to fix this up, we should reassign some new UVs to the sides of these trims. And to do that, we need to first make sure we can identify where these trims are because these sides that we just extruded here don't actually have a group yet. So we can't assign anything explicitly to those. So over here on my poly extrude for the trim, I'm going to turn on the side group and I'm going to call that one trim. So now we have a dedicated group just for that. And then next below that, I'm going to add a new UV project node because I want to reproject my UVs mainly for the trims, but also for the bottom. Because if we ever have, um, say, a door or something where we can see both the trim and the bottom floor, I don't want there to be an obvious texture seam there. So I'm going to actually re-UV both of these. Now, by default, the UV project here is going to apply its UVs to everything 
and I don't want that. So up here under the group, I'm going to set this one to only apply to the trim and to the bottom. Okay, so we leave the floor alone, we leave the sides alone, but we do retexture this. Uh, next, we need to make sure that it's oriented in the right way. So let's grab this one, rotate it by 90 degrees. And if we make sure we see our um, widget here, 90 degrees will point this one straight down like so. So that will work. And then um, let's set this one up so it has about the same scale as our previous floors had. So that would be a scale of 5, 5, and 1 in this case. Okay, so now our UVs are laid out, but we still have the wrong texture on this trim. And I'm going to fix that um, in a minute. But first, let's make sure we apply our copy floors node here. So our floors get copied up to the building. And then let's look what the Boolean does. So if we look at our Boolean node, you can see that we actually do get some new uh, geometry and they don't have a texture yet. They're still white. Plus on the bottom floor, depending on how deep we actually decided to cut our elevators into the floor, we might also notice that there are no UVs here. Now in this case, I have raised this one up, so we won't have this issue here, but I'll just show you what I mean. Let's say we show our dependency links, have a look at where these were coming from. And then over here right now, I have my flattened nodes, right, which raise these up to the floor height. If this was slightly lower, say 0 0.01 lower, and I find that one, you can see that this Boolean will also cut into that and apply its material there. So I want to make sure both of these situations get dealt with just in case. So I'm just going to lower these just a tiny bit to make sure they do intersect with the floor so we can see that. So in order to fix that, um, we can actually use a nice trick that comes with the Boolean node because the Boolean node can actually transfer UVs as well. So up here where we have our um, shaft node or um, in shaft I'm gonna apply some UVs to this one and then transform them and in this case I don't care as much about what these UVs look like because this is just a dummy shape and most of the time we won't even see the insides of these because they will be covered by our elevators or well our staircases So let's grab over here a UV unwrap node. And as I covered a few videos ago, the UV unwrap node allows us to unwrap a material. So if I grab a quick shade node as well, we can see what that looks like. I'm going to pull over here my UV view out. So it just creates some nice UVs which will cover this object. Now, I do want to make the um, UVs on these objects a little bit bigger by default. So under the UV unwrap node here, I'm going to change my scale to none. So it doesn't try to keep them uniform. And this will allow it to scale them up much bigger. Basically, um, it's going to scale them based on world space. So this is a pretty close equivalent of, uh, I believe, the world space projection. Okay, It won't try to put it inside the 0 to 1 space. Then if we take a UV transform node, we plug that one in, then now I can scale this one a little bit smaller. So let's say um, 0 0.2, and then we get a slightly better distribution of UVs. And the reason I set this to 0 0.2 is because this will match the actual UV project node we used here with our scale of five. And I'm going to be using five for quite a few other elements in our building because it creates a nice distribution of texture size. If we apply this one over here, I'm just going to grab this quick shade node for a second. Pull this over. Then under my Boolean, if I plug this in, you can see what I mean, that the UVs do line up. They do have about the same scale for both the floor, which comes from our UV project here, and this part here for the UV unwrap.
Okay, so next, um, let's make sure we actually apply a material properly to the trims and also the insides of these. And for that, I just want to use the actual concrete wall material that we used for the bottom of our floors. So let's grab a simple um, Unreal texture node. And I'm going to plug that in. And then I do need to make sure that again, I set up my texture paths. So let's grab our parameter panel again. And let's drag over our texture folder and our materials folder. So those should now be linked up. Let's grab this and let's rename it to trims. And let's configure its texture. So I want to use, like I said, the concrete wall texture for this. And let's make sure we also set this up for Unreal. We don't have to reapply any UVs because we already made sure those are available up here. So let's leave that alone. But we do need to make sure this gets applied to only the um, trims. And then we also need to apply it to our cutout as well. Now at this moment we aren't uh, setting up a group just yet from our boolean. So let's look at the boolean node here. Look at our groups. And over here under the um, B inside A, which is input B inside input A, we can create a group that basically selects wherever B has cut into A. Okay, so that currently creates this group. I'm going to change this one to cutout. If you want to make this slightly easier to see, you can always give it a unique color. There you go. So now anywhere this thing has made a cutout, it will have applied that group. And now under our texture node, I can simply set that one to apply this texture as well. So now that we have it here, we have our concrete material applied wherever we have a cut in our floors. And we have it also on the sides of our trims. And because of our UVs lining up, this should now be continuous. We shouldn't have any seams here. Okay, so that's most of our floors textured. Now there's only one more thing that I want to make sure we actually have a texture for. And that is the um, top floor. Because right now our top floor here has the same material as our indoor floors. And I don't want that. So for that, I'm going to grab my bevel and clean node and pull it down. And then I want to make sure that I actually have a group available that we can use to identify the tops of our floors. Because right now this one's called top. I'm going to go up here to my um, extrude and texture floors node. And under our extrude and groups section, I'm going to change our top group to floor group. This will now create a unique group for all of our floors that does not include our trims. Okay. So if I just highlight that one, it's this one. Then down here, I can now create a um, group combine node to make use of that. Let's plug that in. And I'm going to call this one group roof floor. So this node here is going to create a new group called a uh, roof floor. It's going to be a primitive group and it will equal our current floors. So grab floor from over here and assuming we actually do have an extrusion, which we should always have, um, we should have that group available over there. So there shouldn't be no reason this uh, group combine node will error out for that. But then I want to go ahead and only select the floor that's on the top of our building. And for that, we need to make sure we know which floor number we actually have. Now up here, we have our copy floors node, which can output a copy number as an attribute. So if I look at that one, and I look over here, 
under copy number attribute. I can enable that. And then inside here, we can find copy none. So each one of our floors, let's filter for that, has its own number. And what I want to do is identify all the floors which have uh, floor number six, or rather the total number of floors that we actually have, right? So on our parameter panel, under our building settings, it says here we have six floors. And since our top floor here is going to be identified as number six, we can then go ahead and grab just all the primitives of that floor. If we go down the network, you can see we still have that uh, attribute available. So over here in our group combine node, I can say that our roof floor equals our floors, but only if they intersect with the top floor. And for that, I can access our um, copy number attribute, right? I can say, if this equals our current floor count, so let's grab that parameter from up here, copy that parameter, click here, and then paste it as a relative reference. So with that, this node should now be creating a group if I don't filter for uh, just a floor. So let's use an asterisk there, our roof floor as a group. Now, if I look closer to that, um, this should now be only selecting our floor. It should not be selecting our trim. So that should work. And then I can create a new simple Unreal Texture node below this to uh, set this up. So let's copy it from here because I still want to keep my current links to the uh, interface. plug it in and I'll rename this one to um, roof floor and as for the group let's set this one to roof floor instead like so now for the roof I have a dedicated material so let's look for roof gravel Okay, let's plug that in. Roof gravel like that. And with that, we should now have all of our floor materials um, set up. So if we now look at the bottom of our network, and look at the end result, that's two of our four elements textured, at least the ones that we have right now. So next, um, let's deal with the pillars inside of our building. So let's go inside, have a look at those. Now for these, what I would like to do is create a bit of a concrete texture that has these uh, indents in it, and I want these to stretch. Um, let's copy one of our extrude and texture floors nodes here. Copy this one. Let's move over here to the right where we have our pillars. So here I have my pillar template, and here's the poly extrude that extrudes it out, right? Again, let's grab this one over, so we keep it for now. And let's plug in a new poly extrude and texture. And let's rename this one to um, poly extrude and texture pillars. If the names get in the way, you can always move it over a bit or shorten the names. That's up to you. So for its values, um, I'm going to copy again over here my depth expression or distance expression in this case and plug it in under extrude depth on our node. Okay. Um, for its outputs, I'm going to output every part of this. And as for the group, uh, I don't really care about groups on this. I'm just going to disable those. But for the textures, we do need to change this. So first for the sides, um, let's set this one to concrete panel base color. We need to make sure we apply that to both. And this will create a texture which has a couple of dots in it. Okay. Now I do want to make sure this is set to sweep around. And as for its scale, by default, 
if I set this to one and one, it's going to be kind of dense. And I don't really want that. So I'm going to change it to 0 0.5 for the um, horizontal direction. So this will create dots in the middle of every pillar like this, at least for this particular scale of pillar. If I change the scale of my pillars to something else, then this might look a little different. So let's double check that on our props. Let's say pillar scale is two. Now, actually, this looks fine. And even if I were to change the height of my floors, well, in that case, it's going to stretch our texture. And for that, I do need to actually account for that. So in order to make sure this texture does scale properly when we change the height of our building, I want to take into account my floor height, and then I want to divide that and then round it off. And then I want to clamp it just in case so it can't go too far. And what I mean with that is um, let's grab our floor height value. Let's copy this. It's easier to show, I think, than to explain. Let's plug it into our side texture scale here. So if we do that, by default, it's going to scale it way too much. We have now a repeated texture uh, six times. I don't want that. So I'm going to divide this by four. And I'm going to round it to its nearest uh, integer. So we can use the round expression for that. And if we do that, then now what it's going to do is if it's anywhere close to um, four, it's going to snap to that and return a value of one. If it's closer to eight, then it's going to return a value of two, which it's doing right now. Okay. However, if I were to make our floors so small that they would be under two, then it's going to return a value of zero and then our texture scale would flip out. So if I demonstrate that, I can show you what I mean. Let's say I set my floor height to 1.5. Then now this is going to snap to zero and I don't want that. So I'm going to add a clamp to this. I'm going to make sure the minimum value is always one. And then I'm going to set the maximum value to 100. Because if we ever make floors as high to reach say 100 iterations of this texture above one another, well, I think you've made your floors tall enough. So now with that, um, this should be secure. Let's make sure this works. I'm going to scale this back up to three. And that works. Let's try uh, six again. Now we get a repeated texture like that. If we set it to maybe 10, then it will repeat it um, three times. It does scale and stretch a bit, but only up to a certain point, And then it just adds another duplicate above it. And we'll be reusing this piece of code a few times throughout our uh, texturing uh, system in order to make sure that any textures that are vertical are going to duplicate up properly. So we have good UVs. But okay, let's um, turn this back to a reasonable floor height of three. And also let's change our pillars back so they have a standard one scale. Okay, so this looks fine by me. And then as for the top and bottom, um, I'm just gonna set those up so they have a concrete texture. I don't really care too much about them. Uh, we will bevel them in the end. So if we don't have a top or bottom, then it won't be able to bevel them and we won't have that nice little edge but you don't need it either so if you want you can just remove the top and bottom in my case i'm going to set it up so the top and the bottom use the concrete wall texture and that should do just fine okay so then these are now set up Again, let's look at the end result. We now have some textured pillars inside of our building. So that's nice. And now finally, um, for the outside wall tiles, we do need to set up a couple of things. 
And first, um, I want to space out this particular network a little bit so I can actually build this out. Let's grab some of these nodes down here, drag them down, create a bit of space. And let's pull this down a bit. So to about there. We do have all these blue lines crisscrossing. Um, we're just going to have to live with it because I can't hide them, or at least I haven't found a way to do so. Now, over here on the left, we have our poly extrude depth for the doors. Then we have this one for the windows. And here we have them for the um, upper floor windows. We're going to have to replace these three. These other ones we'll deal with later when we deal with the optimization, but they aren't used to texture or anything, so we can leave those alone. So let's grab these three, and I'm going to replace those. Plug it in like that. Let's grab one of our extrude and texture floor nodes. Copy it. Paste it in. And I'm going to rename this one to um, doors. Its depth value is going to be that of the wall thickness. So let's copy that. Paste that in. And then as for the groups on this node, I want to basically turn these all back to their normal setting. So uh, if you want to do that, you can either right click and say revert to defaults. Or you can control middle mouse button on the name. And that will, of course, return them back to their default settings, right? So here on the textures for the door, um, you'll notice that the poly extrude doesn't work in this context because this door isn't flat on the ground. And that's a problem, right? Um, our extrude node only works in an up direction. So to fix that, what we are going to do is we're actually going to take this piece of geometry, this door, we're going to rotate it so it's flat on the ground because it's a predictable shape. We don't have to worry about its orientation. And then we're going to extrude it up and then we're going to rotate it back. So let's create a transform node here. I'm going to name this one rotate. And in this case, it's part of my texturing setup. So I'm going to color it green too. And for its rotation value, Let's set this one up to rotate 90 positive. And I'm just going to do this by hand, like so. So that will now extrude properly. Now, if you want to undo that rotation, what you can do is grab this uh, transform node, copy it, paste it below. And then instead of typing negative 90, we can also go here and say invert transformation. And that will simply undo the transformation that we just applied. So it returns it back straight up, right? I'm going to take this setup here and um, wrap it inside of its own netbox. I'll call this one doors um, for the ground floor. Let's drag this down a bit like so. And now we just need to set up its textures. Over here, for the textures on the side, I still want to keep my bars texture, so that's fine. But I am going to change my um, side scaling here to be a little less stretched. So let's set it to 0 0.25 instead. That should be a bit nicer. And that will look better inside um, Windows as well, I think. Then as for the um, ground floor texture. The outside of our building is using this concrete paneling and then the inside is using this plaster texture. So for this, let's have a quick look at where this texture is going to end up when it gets put on our building. Let's look at the end of our network here. And it looks like the back of our texture is going to be the outside and the um, front of our texture is going to be the inside. So over here, I'm going to set up the bottom texture to be the um, outside 
panels, and that's going to be concrete panels 2. That would be this one. Make sure you set up both. It's going to use a orthogonal unitized projection. So it's based on its uh, bounding volume, right? And then as for its uh, scaling, I want to set the default scale to one. But just like with our pillars, I do want to make sure that if this building gets too tall, I do want it to scale. So it actually starts applying them um, better in the height orientation. So let's go over to our pillar over here. And then under the side UVs, let's copy this expression again. Go back here. And I'm going to paste it in under the bottom texture scale uh, V. So now this will automatically scale if we ever make our building uh, or our floors taller. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the inside. And for that one, I'm going to change this one to the plaster texture. So that should be rough plaster. For its scale, again, set this to 1 and 1. And then I'll change this to the expression we just copied. And before I forget, let's also make sure we set it up to um, unitized. So we get a proper scaling, right? If we look at the UVs for this one, our door shape is inside the 0 to 1 space right now. Okay, so that's that for the doors. Um, let's go ahead and copy this for our windows as well. So let's grab this, copy that. And on the right, we have our bottom floor windows, I believe. Let's double check. Windows ground floor right there. So I'm just going to paste that in there. Plug it in. And in this case, I don't really have to keep that um, poly extrude around. And now you'll notice that it should already be set up for at least our bottom floor tiles. So in this case, we have our texture on the outside. And we have our texture on the inside. So that's all working. Um, and now we just need to do the same thing for the top floor. Okay. So for those, I'm going to copy this, but I do need to make some changes. Let's go here. Again, we can get rid of that poly extrude for now. Let's plug this in. And I do need to make some changes to the names as well. So um, let me do that first, actually. This is going to be our upper floor windows. And then here we have the ground floor windows. Okay. Um, and as for the texture on those, basically for the um, upper floor windows, instead of using the paneling, I want to use a brick texture. So for that, I'm just going to use the, um, for the bottom here, the red brick material. And if you set that over for both, then that should now work. So there we go. Now we have UVs and materials for both assigned. So that's good. Okay. Um, now if you want to double check the scaling, go ahead. Let's grab our parameter interface. And I'm going to scale my floor height to 9. And as you can see, um, even though our tiles are very tall, it does stretch out the texture, but it does start duplicating it if it gets too high. If I set this to 10, 
I think it should duplicate again. And there we go. Now we have a three duplications basically. Okay, so that, that's set up. Now we just need to deal with the windows. Um, let's go ahead and grab this part here. And I want to add some um, texture nodes, some simple Unreal texture nodes here, just for those. Now the windows don't actually have a material that I can view inside of Houdini, but in Unreal, I do have these two materials right here, one for the bottom floor and one for the top floor. And if you were to replace these, then you can also use their UV layout to get a nice um, window type texture. So um, you can experiment with that if you want. And I'm looking to add a couple of extra materials that you might be able to use um, in the final download for a file, such as a couple of these um, window textures that I was using in my trailer. But for now, um, let's go over here. Let's copy one of our simple Unreal texture nodes, like this one. Actually, I'm going to just add this one into a netbox here. And then, down below, let's add these in. So this is going to be the glass for the upper floor. And for this one, um, if we look at that, what I would like to do is replace its material. And we do need to make sure that we remove this group function here, because otherwise it won't assign. Now, I don't really care about what material it assigns because we won't be able to see it. I'm just going to empty this field. And this will make it completely blue, right? Uh, if there's no texture assigned, it just becomes white in Houdini. And then over here under the Unreal Material, I'm going to change this one to um, Deco Glass Upper Floors. And that will assign this material. Then let's copy that, paste it in on the right. And I'm going to name this one to bottom or ground floor. Bottom floors uh, should do. So with that assigned, uh, we no longer need this quick shade up here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And that should make everything work. Um, in this case, we don't have a way to see our UV layout, but we can see it over here, that it's actually applied. Um, so yeah, that should work. Now we still have a couple of remaining things I want to take care of, including a material output. Um, and also, I believe... So um, something has broken inside of the tool, and I've noticed there is a memory corruption glitch in the current builds of Houdini, even the most recent one that I found. Um, this might be fixed in the near future. I did submit a bug report, but basically, if this happens to you, the moment you're playing around with uh, material nodes, it's possible that some of the nodes up in your network get a memory corruption glitch, and I found that this can cause loops, for example, to stop working properly. If this happens to you, um, you can try to fix it by refreshing the loop. If you do that, it can bring your results back. But in general, if this happens, um, you're better off restarting Houdini. Now, I have noticed this appears mostly when you try to use an attribute to drive a material name. Like if you were to try and drive material name here, but there might be other cases where this happens. It doesn't happen so frequently if you don't try to use a, an attribute though. So I think we are fine. I haven't encountered this problem too much um, with my current setup that I'm using here. But if it does happen to you, then like I said, the best case for you is to restart Houdini, uh, especially if you start changing parameters because that's where it actually starts to break. If I change some of my parameters here, I can double check. For now, it seems to be behaving. But I have had it happen before that my building wouldn't work properly anymore. And in that case, um, we'd have to restart.
So it appears like it's still functioning and it's updating properly. So I'm gonna assume for now, I'm not dealing with a restart scenario. So I think we are fine. Um, like I mentioned, it's a memory glitch. It doesn't mean your tool is broken. If you are working with materials and you notice this happens, especially with loops, if it does start to act weird and it stops updating properly, like you change a value and things don't work properly anymore, um, or elements start disappearing, don't push your luck. Basically, save your scene, reboot Houdini. Because if you push it too far, it can actually crash the program. I've noticed, like, a lot. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I'm doing here shouldn't break too easily, so uh, we can work with that. And in Unreal, this shouldn't break at all, because Unreal doesn't actually use the um, Houdini materials that we're assigning here anyway. So uh, we're using the Unreal materials instead. Okay, so at this point, we only have two things left to do, and that is to deal with the material output and with the um, cleanup system that I want to add for our tiles. And I want to do that because there's one little glitch that occurs in Unreal that we should deal with because it can actually make the tool uh, cook infinitely or take a very long time to process. And this tends to happen when we force our building here to create a building in a straight line. So if I go to my object level and I go to my building shape, and instead, if I were to provide a straight line instead of this curve here, then it might break. So let's grab a curve node, render that, and I'm gonna draw a line um, along my grid here, just a straight line. And if I let that cook out, and for that I might have to reassign my uh, curve here. So let's say curve two, I think. Yeah. And you'll notice that currently there is no geometry being provided out of the tool. But even though it's just a straight line, it still has a corner here. And this has to do with how the system actually interprets that line. So over here, if I look at the result, here's our spline that we created. And then it actually has an extra primitive right in the middle. Because it is a continuous line, it will actually loop back over itself. So we have a doubled up line in the middle. And if we feed this to the system, then down, all the way down in our uh, tiling system, this can actually break. It doesn't have to break, but it can break. And in Unreal, I've noticed um, it can cause the system to hang. So to prevent that, what I would like to do is that if we ever have a straight line that doesn't actually create a proper area for our uh, floors and for our walls to build around, I simply want to unroll this line so it's just one continuous segment. Let's go over here where we have our polyfill. And all we really have to do is isolate out our um, floor plane. So that would be this one. I'm going to pull that over here, basically make a copy. And with that, we actually have one primitive here that we can measure. Then if I grab a measure node and by default, it will be set to area, which will calculate out the area of this surface and under primitives down here, you can see that we do have it available. And here we have a very small fractional value. If this value is this small, basically just a straight line with no surface area, I want to simply unroll the curve that we got here um, back out into a straight line. And we can do that using a end node. So I'm gonna grab up here a line from my polyfill node and plug it into this end node here. And then under the end node itself, I'm going to tell it to um, open up my closed use. And when we do that, we should remove that extra primitive 
that was in the middle of our line. So we just have one long string of primitive segments, but nothing that wraps back around. Then I'm going to grab a switch node here and flip between them. If this value is too low, we're going to use this end node. So we unroll it so we don't have that loop around. And otherwise, we are simply going to use the result that we were already getting. So for that, um, let's create a switch. And I'm going to call this one unroll if no area. Then um, let's plug this in. So I'm going to grab another dot, move it over there, plug that in first, and then grab the end node and plug that in second. Also, I'll call this one unroll. So this one, I want to link up to that measure node over there. So basically, we're going to get the area attribute from that one as a um, primitive attribute reference. So in here, let's add a spare input. Grab this measure node, which we'll call measure area. And then I'm going to plug it in here. Then under our expression, um, let's just type in if our primitive attribute under negative one, under um, primitive zero, for the attribute called area with its first index, so index zero. If this one is less than 0 0.01, in that case, we want to use input one, otherwise zero. So that's a pretty simple setup, but this will prevent our system from breaking in Unreal. And this will be especially relevant when we start to compile this system later on, uh, because compiling can be a little unstable if you feed it bad geometry, depending on what nodes you use inside. But uh, just in case, I want to clean it up before we continue. So here we go. Let's um, color this one slightly red. And I will call this one safety uh, for zero area. And then all we really have to do is uh, link it up to our node down here. So let's grab it, plug it in. And maybe we can just move everything over here down a bit so it all lines up. Something like that. OK. Cool. So with that built in, let's make sure it still works over here at the end result. Um, in this case, this node, this group node is actually erroring out because we have a zero area. And if we have zero area, then we don't really have a primitive to work with once it runs through the system here. So in that case, um, we also don't have a group on it and that will fill this group node. So while I said before that this would probably work just fine, let's add a dummy group in front of it just in case. So over here, let's add an attribute wrangle. And then we'll say dummy group. This is going to be for the floor group here. So all I really have to do is set this to primitive and then type in at group underscore floor and then a semicolon. So by doing it this way, we activate the group, but we don't write to it. So it will be present on our geometry as a uh, zero primitive group. But at the same time, if there is already a floor group available, it won't do anything to it. So yeah, it's a dummy group. Okay, so with that, if we then look at the end result. Okay, so now the tool is working. Um, again, it's not meant to work on a straight line, right? It needs to have some area, but just in case this will make sure the tool won't break on us. So let's return this back to um, what we had before. Let's make sure we have curve one over here. So let's grab the tool, go to our input and set this back to curve one. 
Okay. So with that, this should now be fine. And then let's go ahead and set up the actual material output and then test it in Unreal. Because uh, I think we are about ready to wrap up this video. So let's grab this stuff down here. Let's move it down a bit. I'm going to grab everything um, from the clean attributes node down and move it down there. Something like that. And then uh, in here, I'm going to create a new netbox. And I'm going to call this one material output. So what I would like to do here is set up our system so that we can turn on and off different parts of our building based on the material and the color. Um, basically, I want three modes. The first mode is simply going to remove all the materials and only keep the color. And then the second mode is going to be where we take the UV quick shape material and apply it to our building. So instead of the uh, materials we have applied here, we are going to simply provide a simple UV material. And then we're going to feed that into Unreal. Now, by default, the way how the UV quick shade is set up in here, it has a um, texture material node in here that isn't compatible with the Houdini engine's material output. Now, so far, what we've done is we've used the materials that we already have with the project and we simply assigned those by their reference address, right? By their reference copy. However, um, we can also generate materials with the Houdini engine, generate brand new materials using Houdini. However, this process is a little limited because it does have some limitations when it comes to what Houdini can output. So I'm going to keep it relatively simple. But before I continue, I do want to quickly show you what I mean. And for that, I actually went ahead and created a test digital asset that I can use to demonstrate what I mean. So over here, I have a couple of assets lined up. And one of them is a door that is actually from the master class in general that I'm not using in this module. But it does show a little bit of what I'm talking about. And then here on the sides, I have one generated mesh with its materials. And then I have one of our static meshes that are actually from our um, static mesh folder, like over here. So in Houdini, with this tool, I basically loaded up a series of materials and tried to set this up. And it looks fine at the moment. However, that's because I actually went into the material that it generated and I made a couple of adjustments to it. So this is what it generated from these settings here. And inside of it, um, the material that Unreal generates looks something like this. But in order to make it look properly, I had to set it up a little bit different, make some modifications. And that means it's not completely procedural. In fact, if I go and rebuild this one, it might actually go ahead and break the result. So let's have a quick look what it does with that. Yeah, so here you go. Basically, what it's done, and that's the main issue that I found, is that if you have any kind of transparency channel assigned, um, it automatically wants to turn it into a transparent material instead of a masked material. And I have not found a way to adjust this. There might be a way, but so far, it hasn't been easy to get this to work. And the other main limitations that I found with this is that the um, material that we can generate from Houdini does not support the ambient occlusion material input. So we cannot assign an ambient occlusion. It only supports base color, metallic, specular, roughness, theoretically uh, emissive color, opacity, and then the normal. Any other materials here I have not tested, but ambient occlusion is not one of them. So the standard material that I use normally, the um, roughness uh, metallic ambient occlusion material that Substance generates, for example, doesn't actually work with this. So instead of going that route and making something that potentially is just going to be complicated and hard to explain, 
um, I'm going to go a slightly easier route and show you the basics. And then if you want to experiment with it, then be my guest. Okay. But basically, if we take this tool and we go to our materials setup here, we can change it to basic material. So that is mode two. And now you can see that the building has basically spawned with our grid material. And this material is being generated. And we're doing that through the same principal shader method as these ones we're using, but I'm only using the diffuse channel. I didn't use any of the other channels because I didn't need to, right? And down here, if we look under the result, you can see that the material that it's assigning is being generated in our Houdini engine temp folder right here. And it's a very simple material. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this um, because the last material that we're going to output, of course, is our actual materials that we've created so far. So our Unreal Material setup, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Let's go ahead and create a couple of attribute delete nodes and a switch. Let's start with the switch. Let's add the one in here. And I'm going to name this one the material switch. And then here on the left, I'm going to create two separate attribute delete nodes. Now I don't have to separate them, but this way I can name them based on what they do. So this first one, let's plug it in from this line, like so, is going to be called the remove Houdini preview material. And then under our primitive attributes, I'm going to get rid of our shop material path material right there. Because that's eventually the one that uh, we actually see, right? This material path points to the uh, material nodes, which are currently inside of our utility nodes. So that's where that comes from. That's where it's currently loading those materials from. And if we remove that path, then we won't see it on our building anymore because it no longer has that assignment. Then next, um, I would like to remove the Unreal material as well. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say remove Unreal material. For this, let's go over here, delete that, and then replace it with the Unreal material attribute instead. So now that one is gone down here. And while we still have these ones, our preview material and preview material name, those aren't going to be used by Houdini or Unreal. And we're going to get rid of them down here with our clean node anyway. So let's plug this in. And this is going to be our first input. Then next, let's set up that preview material I mentioned. So for that, I'm going to create a um, new material network over here on the right to house the material that we need to use because like i mentioned quick shades won't cut it we need to use a material node instead so let's plug that one in and you might have seen this one in the um, houdini 101 video which covered some different concepts in houdini including materials i'm going to call this one assign basic material. And then over here, let's create a material net or mod net. This is a um, different context in Houdini. Uh, basically, it's a material context. And in here, we can create some materials. So I'm going to name this one basic material. Also, I'm going to wrap this inside of its own net box and color that one green. So inside of this basic material node, I want to set up um, some settings so we can actually configure what material is going to be output 
to our material node over here. And for that, we need to go in here and create a principal shader. And the principal shader is a um, vex type node. Um, this is a vex context. Originally, vex used to be a shader language, after all. Um, however, this node is capable of assigning different textures from over here. And if we enable these, then Houdini, when it runs in Unreal, is going to look at this material and render out a new texture before it feeds it to Unreal as its own file. And that one then gets assigned and applied to our model. So however our texture is looking inside Houdini would theoretically also be the way how it should look in Unreal, um, bar some translation issues. Now what we want to do is enable the base color texture over here. And this will give us the texture field. If we make sure we set a texture in here that the tool can find inside the Houdini engine, so in the Houdini engine context, right? Then the Houdini engine will be able to pick that up, render it out to a new texture, and load it up in a procedural material that it can then display in Unreal. So to make this a bit easier to set up, what I want to do is go outside of our basic material node, open up its um, edit parameter interface, so not its type properties, but here for our spare parameters. And then I'm gonna drag that texture material, the texture material uh, path here for our base color in there. So we can set it on the top of the node. In the end, I'm only gonna use this for one material, so I'm just gonna promote it up to there. Let's apply that. And that will give us a material path here that we can use. Now I know which material I want to use and that one is already present in the quick shade. So let's just grab that one, UV quick shade. And from here, we can grab this material path. Houdini already knows where this is located. So if I grab that path and I plug it in here, then now this principal shader should be using that material. Now I do want to make sure that it will render properly. So I'm also going to go to the surface tab on this principal shader and I'm going to set the base color to one or white basically. Otherwise it will multiply the color down and make it darker. You can also play with some of the other settings if you want. Um, but as far as I'm aware, I don't need to. So let's keep this the way it is like that. And the last thing I need to do is give a name to this principal shader because that is eventually the name the material will inherit um, in Unreal. So I'm going to name this to basic grid. Okay, so now um, let's go over to the material node and let's grab the material from our material network. Over here, we can either browse for it using the browse button, or we can type in the field. I'm just gonna search for this one as basic grid, like that. And then grab the relative path and accept that. So now this should load that material through our material node. And you might notice this one cannot be compiled. So that's one other reason I do it here and not somewhere else in my network like this loop. We'll deal with that more later. But with that, we now have our material set up. The only thing I want to do here now is to remove the original Unreal material I had assigned because this one might interfere with our custom material that we're trying to set up. I think this one will overtake the Unreal material that we have, but just in case, I'm going to get rid of it. So now we don't have a default Unreal material anymore. Instead, we have a shop material path, which is pointing to a principal shader inside of our node, which has a texture loaded. And if we feed that to the output, then the Houdini engine will pick that up and create a texture for us based on the uh, shader inside this node. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too much information, but it's a new concept and I wanted to get through it relatively quickly. 
So to finish it up, let's just add the last output and that one's going to be for our Unreal Material. And for that, I simply want to get rid of the color inside of my building. So we don't have any vertex color overriding our materials anymore. We just have a pure white color instead. And then the Unreal Material gets applied on top of that, right? Let's create another attribute delete node. And I'll call this one remove color. Plug that in and then into the switch. As for its settings, um, we want to remove our point color over here. As far as I know, we don't have any other color attributes on this. So I'm just going to disable those. And then last, we need to make sure that we pass through this attribute through our attribute delete node. Because right now, our um, shop material path is passed through, but not our Unreal material. So over here, I'm going to select it. And I need to make sure it's actually in my output for that to work. As Unreal material. And we need to add a hat symbol in front of that so it excludes it from our selection. So now we should have this as an output from our node right there. So let's finish this up and let's add this particular parameter here for our material switch to the interface and then we can go and test it out in Unreal. Let's open up our type properties, go to our parameters and scroll down to the setup tab. And in here, what I would like to do is create an ordered menu from this switch. So let's grab the parameter from the switch drag it in above our texture folder and change that to an ordered menu. Then I'm going to change this one to um, material mode. And then under its menu tab, I'm going to set value zero as no material. Value one is going to be basic material. And value two is going to be unreal material. So with that, that should work. Um, and then for its default value, I'm going to set this to two, which depending on what state you had it in over here, should already be set. So let's accept that. And with that, I think this should work. So let's go over to the output node here, render that and save the tool. And now let's go over to Unreal and test it out. So in here, um, let's install our new utility nodes first and also update our assets. So over here, I have the new utility nodes, the simple Unreal Texture and Extrude and Texture node. Let's grab those and drag them in here. And then I'm going to reload these nodes just in case. Okay, so that's all of the ones that we have reloaded. And then we should be able to rebuild our building and get our materials to show. Let's wait one minute. And there we go. We now have a material on our building. And let's double check it. Looks like everything is assigned properly. We have them on our pillars inside. We have our floors. The interior walls are set up properly. The ceiling is too. So all of that looks good. Here's the roof. And the bottom floor as well. So with that, um, yeah, I think this is done. We now have a material on our building. So we at least know that that works. Um, and then let's quickly test out the other options that we added to the tool. So over here, I'm going to switch this over to no material first. And if we do that, we should be getting our material back that we had before. So with our colors instead of our materials. 
and if I set it to basic material, then now it should auto generate a new material for us. And there we go, it took a while to render, but once it's done, down here on our building, we now have this grid. And this one is auto generated every single time we rebuild our tool. Now you might notice that this texture here is a bit lighter than the texture that we had on our example file. And that's because in the example file, I hadn't actually changed the shader settings. So uh, the material was still set to 0.2 for its um, tint, right? So that's what I meant with how the material is basically generated by Houdini from the shader. And then from there, it creates the textures stores them in the temporary folder over here and then it assigns them to the material so that's important to note now let's set this back to our unreal material and with that this is done now if you look under the tool itself and you scroll down to the model then you can see all the different material layers that we have set up and for every unique material that we have assigned from the tool, it will create a new material layer. So we can use that to our advantage um, to set that up for us. Now, if you do want to change out some of these materials for, say, something else, you can do that. You can go, say, to the materials folder, um, grab something else, like maybe this material here, this roof panel, and we can plug it into one of these. And this will replace it on our building right like the trim here however i have noticed that if you start messing with the materials here in the list of the actual asset and then you recoup the asset then under the hood any changed materials that you've adjusted are still there to some extent and it can cause these to desync with the materials that houdini assigns like basically the order of the materials get mixed up so a way to do this safely is to either go into the mesh itself so this one and then make the adjustments there however any changes you make here will be undone every time you um, recoup the tool so do keep that in mind or alternatively you can also go ahead and bake out the result of the tool up here and this will output everything from the building as a separate set of um, completely baked out models. So at this point, this model can be adjusted safely because it's now a fixed mesh. It's now located in the um, Houdini bake folder, right? There. So with that, um, we now have our materials and let's quickly run through our building, test it out. And if that's good, then I think we can go ahead and call this a lecture. So here we go collisions are still working and we now have proper materials assigned to everything all right very cool so with that um, this chapter is complete and we can now go ahead and continue and add the rest of the features for the building um, such as the actual elevator shaft shape the staircases and the balconies. And then we'll finally wrap up the lecture by speeding up our tools compiling speed by adding a compile loop and making some adjustments to make that work. Okay, well done. If you followed along so far, you did great. Because right now you know how to create a dedicated utility node that can assign materials for Unreal and Houdini and um, that works seamlessly with the Houdini engine. So thank you for watching this video if you liked it, please join us in the Discord channel. I'd love to see what you've done with it and how you made your own adjustments. Or go ahead and like or leave a comment on this video itself. I always like to hear what you guys have to say, if you like the video and so forth. Um, and other than that, thanks for watching this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.